Daniel from scriptingisfun.com. In this video we're going to be taking our character that we brought in in the last video and we're going to look at how to make him work with Unity's pathfinding system by adding a nav mesh agent and a nav mesh. So we have our guy here all set up. He's got some root motion on his animation so if we were to hit uh, the forward button he walks and then he goes back to idle um, but today what we're going to do is we're going to look to see how to make him move via the pathfinding system inside of Unity. So the first thing we want to do is generate a navigation mesh, a nav mesh on our terrain. So you're going to want to go to window and to navigation and that will open up the navigation window over here with your inspector. You want to make sure you select the object that you want to generate the navigation mesh on. So I'm going to select my terrain. And then um, we're just going to leave this walkable, but you can select different types of items that are not walkable or jumpable, but we're just going to keep this simple for this video. So navigation area walkable. Uh, and then you're going to go to your bake settings. Now this is where you can tell Unity a little bit about the type of uh, characters you're going to have walking around, uh, how big around they are, how tall they are, how steep of a slope you want them to be able to walk up, how high a step that they can take, um, and then these off mesh links are if you have uh, two different meshes you can say hey how far apart can they jump between or drop down from um, and all the advanced things here we just kind of leave that all alone. So this is just all one mesh here and my little mountainous terrain so I'm going to leave all the default settings. I'm going to hit bake and then you can um, see that it very quickly, because this is in a very large mesh, it very quickly went over and looked at all the areas that are walkable. So all the areas here that are in blue are areas it's saying it can walk on. Now you might want to look like inside your water here to see see how the edge of that plane looks like it's coming right by the edge of my water. So you don't want it to walk down in your water um, again, this is all being generated off of uh, off of the angle that it goes. So if we just make this more of a straight drop off here after the shore, then it won't do it. But now we have our walkable area. Our mesh is uh, complete. So that is part one. The next thing you want to do is go back to your character. And he needs a component added to him. The component we want is under navigation and it is a nav mesh agent. So this is um, the nav mesh agent. It gives you a cylinder around your character. So you can change this a bit. Um, like radius here, we'll shrink this in. I'm probably going to put this down to about shoulder width for him, something about like that. This will also act as a collider for the player. Uh, and then um, maybe we'll pull the height down a bit so that it's more matched up with his actual height here. So that doesn't look too bad. And this little cylinder here now is going to act as a collider and it's also going to be the component that moves our character around. So um, everything else here you can just leave the same for now. Um, later on once we get in here you can see if you want to uh, speed will control how fast he moves, angular speed is how quickly it turns, acceleration how fast he goes from a stop to full speed. Stopping distance is how many units from his target that you want him to walk to uh, he stops from. Alright, so now we have the two uh, parts set up with the terrain mapped as a terrain map and the uh, nav mesh agent on our, uh, our palette in here. And now we just have to add a script. So let's go into um, our scripts folder here and let's make a new script and we're gonna call this we're called we're gonna call this the path finding script because that's what we're doing here we're using this nav mesh and nav mesh agent to do pathfinding and this is really great because unity has this built in uh, and we don't have to do very much here to make use of it it's a very powerful and flexible system that we can make use of. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this pathfinding script over here to my character and then we'll open that up in mono develop. Here's our pathfinding script open in mono develop. First thing we need to do up here is add another using 
Anytime we're going to use the pathfinding system, we need to say using Unity Engine dot AI. That gets us access to the pathfinding commands. And then we're going to make a private nav mesh agent variable, and we'll just call it agent. This is because we need to link to the nav mesh agent component on our character so that we can issue commands to it. And our start function, let's go ahead and add in um, a git component to fill this in. So we'll say agent equals git component. And the type of component we want is a nav mesh agent. And we will, we will store that in our nav mesh agent variable for agent. There we go. All right, then what we're going to do is um, we're going to specify a target. So we'll make a public transform variable here. We'll call it target. And we're going to give our player, our, our uh, AI here, a target to move towards. So then in our start function, we're going to um, give him the command to start navigating towards the target. So we say agent dot, and we're going to set a destination. Now we need to give it a vector three destination, so we need to give it target dot position. So this will cause the navigation system to kick in. It will calculate a route from where the agent currently is to the target position in the scene. So let's save this. We will go out into Unity here. And then let's find something that we can use as a target. So let's just drop a cube here into our scene. And let's go ahead and move that cube over here somewhere. Um, let's add a rigid body to it so it'll sit on the ground. And, um, and then we'll just rename this as our target. We'll go to our palette in here and we'll feed this cube here into our target slot. And when I hit play, our character should walk to that cube. So let's just see what happens here. And you notice, there he goes. Now, he's not playing his animation, uh, but he is going to the cube. You'll also notice that he walks right to the center of the cube and this collider here is not interacting with the uh, box collider that is around him. Now, if you wanted to update and, and go to him every frame, see, I put it in the start function here, so it only did it at the beginning. But if we move this to our update function, now every frame, it'll go out and set a destination to the target. So now you can get something where he'll track something in real time. So, for instance, we can start it over there, and as he moves towards it, if I move it, it automatically recalculates. And I'm getting some weird physics interactions there. But he'll keep following and chasing that box around as long as uh, we move it around in the scene. Okay? So that's one use of a nav mesh agent, moving a character with it. We can add the animation back in as well. If we go to the animator here, we can see we still have the animator there. And we have this speed parameter. So we could still set the speed parameter via code as we were doing before. So if we go back in here to our script, we could uh, get a, ourselves a link to our animator. Let's call that anim. And then down here in the start function, we could do the same thing. We can say anim. We can use a git component. We're looking for an animator this time. And we can establish that link to the animator. And then every frame, we can check to see if we are moving. Now this time, we're not moving based off any inputs. We're moving off the nav mesh agent. So what we would do is we would say anim.setFloat. The float we want to set is speed, I believe. Let's take a look at that and make sure. Yes, yeah, speed. And then we want to give it a value. The value we want here has to be a float. So we're going to go to our agent, and we're going to um, 
go look for a float that we can give him. We want to know how fast he's going. So let's go to agent.velocity. Now velocity is a vector 3, um, but we could get um, the magnitude of this. So we're going to say agent.velocity.magnitude. Magnitude is a float, which is the length of the vector. So this is going to give us um, a number bigger than zero if he is moving currently and it will give us a zero if he's not moving. That'll work just fine with the way we have the animator already set up. Alright, then we have to remember that we have this palette and controller script on him from before. So we're going to uncheck that because that will interfere with our our new script here, pathfinding with setting those values. So if we uncheck that and we make the changes we did in the new script and we hit play, he should start to walk. And there you go. He is now walking towards it. Now the speed might be a little bit fast so let's do this. Let's make the camera follow this guy around by dragging and dropping it on him. Let's go here and reset the transform so the camera is right inside of him and then if we go to our scene view here we can pull the camera back a bit and pull it up so we're looking behind him um, and we can definitely rotate it a little bit on the x-axis so we can see. So now we can actually have the camera follow him around and you can see that he is walking. Now it looks like he's walking a little bit uh, too fast here to keep up with his animation. So that's easy enough to fix. We just go here to the nav mesh agent, turn the speed down maybe to something like a 2 and we can see if that looks a little more natural. And that's a little bit better perhaps uh, but there he is walking through our world. Alright, so that's if you want to make it more an AI-like behavior. If you want this to be a point-and-click style game, then we can also modify this so that he will walk to uh, wherever we click in our scene here, in our game when we're playing. So let's make a quick modification there. So instead of setting our destination every frame, we'll go ahead and comment that out. What we want to do is we want to uh, look for a click on our mouse, and then we want to capture the point uh, that our mouse is pointing to in our game world and then set that as the destination for our character. So what we're going to want to do is first of all check to see if we got a click on our on our mouse. So we're going to say if input and it's get mouse button down. We have to tell it which mouse button. The right mouse button, or I'm sorry, the left mouse button is button zero. So if we get a click on our left mouse button, then what we need to do is we need to figure out where that mouse is in the screen and convert that into world coordinates. So this takes a couple of, of steps here, but we're going to use some ray casting here. So first I want a ray cast hit variable called hit that I'm going to use to capture uh, some ray cast information. And then I want to define the ray that I want to shoot out from my camera. So I'm going to say ray equals camera dot main so we're going to get the main camera as our origin point for the ray and then I want to do a screen point to ray so I want to get a ray that re that runs uh, from the camera through a point on the screen which is going to be my mouse point so we need to tell it then the point we want is our input dot mouse position that will give me the mouse position uh, on the screen and it'll shoot a ray right through that spot. Alright, now that we have that, we can check to see if we got a hit on anything. So we're going to say if physics.raycast and we're going to feed it in that ray that I defined and we're going to tell it to send out some information to that raycast hit variable hit that I set up. So if we hit something, if, if this ray hits something with a collider on it, then this if statement will run. And then what we want to do is get that uh, as a vector 3. We're going to set the vector 3. We'll call this our new target position. And we're going to set that equal to hit dot point. This gives me the point in real world space where that ray hit a collider, which is probably going to be our terrain right now in this game because there's not really anything else in there. So we're going to capture that 
vector 3 position there and then we can feed that into our agent so now we'll say agent set destination and the destination we want to give it is our new target position so this will cause our uh, player to move and navigate all by himself to wherever we click on the screen which is the heart of a click and move game so let's save that and go on into unity here make sure we don't have any errors and now if I play so let's make this window a little bigger and I hit play when I click on the screen so I'm gonna click right here he'll move to that point and he'll stop alright and it looks like he's trying to rotate about that point so if that happens that means he's still trying to get to that point and you can look here at your stopping distance and set that to a number bigger than zero like maybe um, a one and then he should stop so that's why he kept circling he's still trying to get to that point which he couldn't actually physically get to uh, so if I click again somewhere he walks there and I say oh hey what's over here we walk over here so I can just keep clicking around the screen now you might want to adjust your camera for something like that so if I go to my camera I can move that now another important thing I didn't mention is that the command we use said camera dot main that means the camera has to be tagged here as the main camera so if you don't have your camera tagged as main camera it's not going to work it'll give you an error saying there is no main camera so make sure you tag your camera as the main camera it does that by default but if you have moved cameras around sometimes you can take that tag off um, so we might want to consider moving the camera back a little bit further from the player maybe up in the air a little bit higher maybe angle it down a bit more on the X so it's more of an overhead third person kind of view and then that gives us a little bit better view of where we want to go so if we want to go way over there he'll navigate around these hills maybe I want to go back to the beach so anytime I click now he moves to the point that I clicked and if I click way out here like in the water he won't move because he can't calculate a path to there but if I click right on the shore he can get right there but once we get off the edge of the nav mesh uh, then he won't be able to move there. Alright, so this is a really nice and simple point and click move system that you can use in your games. Hope you found that useful and interesting. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Have a great day and thanks for watching.